To illustrate, take my former friend turned into a foe, Jeffrey Tucker, who gives us five don'ts when talking liberty. And I quote, they are, first, don't be belligerent. Second, don't presume hatred of liberty. Three, don't presume different goals. And four, don't presume ignorance. And five, don't regard anyone as an enemy. Those are the four don'ts. Now, quite apart from the fact that Tucker does not seem to follow his own advice in his belligerent condemnation of the entire alt-right as liberty-hating fascists, I find his exhortations truly astounding. They may be good advice vis-a-vis -vis people who have just sprung up from nowhere without any traceable history whatsoever, but vis-a-vis -vis real people with a recorded history, they strike me as hopelessly naive, unrealistic, and outright counterproductive. Counterproductive in the pursuit of libertarian ends. For I, and I assume everyone else here, know of and have had met many people in my life who are ignorant, who do have different unlibertarian goals, and who do hate liberty as understood by libertarians. And why in the world should I not regard such people as fools or enemies? And why should I not hate and not be belligerent vis-a-vis -vis my enemies? As a libertarian strategy then, I think Tecker's advice must be considered simply a bad joke. But surely it is good advice if one seeks entry into the state as some sort of libertarian state advisor. And this may well explain the enthusiasm with which Tucker's humanitarian libertarianism has been embraced by the entire liberal libertarian crowd. Now, outside, libertarian, outside egalitarian fantasy lands, however, in the real world, libertarians must above all be realistic and recognize from the outset, as the old right does, the inequality not just of individuals but also of different cultures as an ineradicable datum of the human existence. We must further recognize that there exist plenty of enemies of liberty as defined by libertarianism and that they, not we, are in charge of worldly affairs. That in many parts of the contemporary world their control of the populace is so complete that the idea of liberty and of a libertarian social order are practically unheard of or considered unthinkable, except as some idle intellectual play or mental gymnastics by a few exotic individuals. And that it is essentially only in the West, that is, in the countries of Western and Central Europe and the lands settled by its people, that the idea of liberty is so deeply rooted that these enemies still can be openly challenged. And confining our strategic considerations now only to the West then, we can identify pretty much as the old right has effectively done these actors and agencies as our principal enemies. They are, first and foremost, the ruling elites in control of the state apparatus, and in particular, the so-called deep state, or the so-called cathedral of the military, the secret services, the central banks, and the supreme courts. As well, they include the leaders of the military industrial complex, that is, of nominally private firms that owe their very existence to the state as the exclusive or dominant buyer of their products, and they also include the leaders of the big commercial banks, which owe their privilege of creating money and credit out of thin air to the existence of the central bank and its role as the lender of last resort. They together, that is state, big business, and big banking, form an extremely powerful, even if tiny, mutual admiration society, jointly ripping off the huge mass of taxpayers and living it up big time at their expense. The second, much larger group of enemies is made up of the intellectuals, the educators and educrats from the highest level of academia down to the level of elementary schools and kindergartens. 
funded almost exclusively, whether directly or indirectly by the state, they, in their overwhelming majority, have become the soft tools and willing executioners in the hands of the ruling elite and its designs for absolute power and total control. And thirdly, there are the journalists of the mainstream media as the docile products of the system of public education and the craven recipients and popularizers of government information. 